multicultural at its best. The Louisa Marshall Show. Coming up. All new Simply the Best. Get inspired. Self-made billionaire Edward Mercer is on the show. So I just decided I was going to go out there and touch as many people as I possibly could and lead by example. Mercer was born in Ontario, Canada and grew up in a home with no electricity and no running water. He was also an abused child and became a street kid living in and out of juvenile detention centers until one day he decided to change his life and turn to a new direction. At age 27, Mercer became a self-made millionaire by the popular sales of such toys like the bird that dips into a glass of water, the mood ring, and the glowing yo-yo. In the 1980s, he moved to Costa Rica where he became the largest private landowner, became a champion of numerous environmental causes, and was inducted into the Environmental Hall of Fame in 2008. Ed Mercer was successful in helping more than 50 people become millionaires. Today, he is set to make a new Guinness World Record by helping 100 people become millionaires. All You Simply the Best starts right now. I decided that I don't want to, to leave an inheritance, I want to leave a legacy. So it's not the tracks I make today, it's the tracks I leave behind that's important. Is there going to go the answer? Oh, 100%. That's the only thing I know that could make that happen. Welcome to Vancouver. Well, you know, I, 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 I've been in 86 countries, every state of the United States, every province of Canada, 32 countries in South and Central America. I have to tell you, I've never been treated better than I have here in Vancouver. God bless you. Thank you so much. But yes, it's sir. such an honor for us to have you here. Really. It's totally my pleasure. Thank you so much. Ed, uh, tell us a little bit about your life leading up to becoming a millionaire at age 27. Not a, not a very nice story, but I'll, I'd like to share it with you anyways. I've, uh, actually, I was uh, an abused child and uh, taken away from my parents when I was a, a young, young, young boy. Lived with my grandparents, and I lived in a house with no running water, no electricity, no plumbing. Actually, we had no floors in our house. And, uh, the only time we even had drinking water is when we melted snow in the winter time. I have four younger brothers. They all passed away, younger than me. Two of them uh, made the wrong decisions with, uh, with uh, alcohol and drugs. And uh, my father died the same way. And uh, uh, my grandfather died, and I was a street person at 15. And uh, became a millionaire at 27. And some of the viewers out actually helped me get rich. That was an incredible thing. Uh, I don't know if you remember that little woodpecker that went into the glass of water. Remember that? Yeah. I made a couple million dollars off that. And then I got involved with the, the mood ring. Everybody knows about the mood ring. I mean, <laughs> I made a few million off the mood ring. And, and then uh, the yo-yo, the lit up in the dark, the glow-yo, I made a few million off that. And uh, I broke four world records and other things that I've done. And so I just started moving forward. And uh, actually, I ended up going to Costa Rica. And uh, I was the Canadian kickboxing champion in Canada and uh, ended up having 15 professional fights. So I won 12 out of 15 by knockout the first round. So I was pretty good at it. I always tell everybody I broke my nose in three places. I'm not going back to those three places again. Right? <laughs> so uh, it was, uh, I ended up, ended up in, in Costa Rica. The thing is about Costa Rica, when I, when I entered Costa Rica, there's a few things I didn't like. The American people, and I say this and openly, but were coming into Costa Rica, and not only were they, you know, the beautiful parrots, the beautiful scarlet macaw parrots, not only were they stealing them, they were killing them, and they were selling the feathers on Rodale Drive and for hats and purses and expensive dresses. And a lot of people with extreme wealth feel that they can purchase anything money will buy. And they thought their children, for some reason, could have a pet monkey. Well, the only way you can have a pet monkey is to kill the mother. And if you don't kill the mother, the mother will commit suicide. And they were stealing the turtle eggs by the thousands and selling them in Asia for aphrodisiacs. I only talk about money as a measuring stick, but I spent $3 million of my own money and uh, hired armed guards and, and planted uh, almond trees and, and different things, which was food of choice for the scarlet macaws and set up feeding stations. Now I'm... I'm proud to say I have the largest flock of scarlet macaws in the country. I have thousands of turtle eggs hatching and, and monkeys everywhere. 
And the whole thing is, is not how much money you make in your lifetime, is what you become as a result of it. I think in order to have more, we must become more. In order for things to change, we must change. And uh, you can only lead by example. And I decided many years ago that no matter what I touched, whether it be a person or an opportunity, I wanted to make that person or opportunity better when I found it. Um, I worked for a program called Scared Straight. I was a mediator between probation and prison. Unfortunately, young, young children, when they get in trouble, they, they don't know where to go. Their next, their next trip is, is prison. And so I was a mediator between probation and prison. I worked with Suicide Hotline. I worked with Battered Housewives. I worked with John Howard Society, which is a program where men do get out of prison or women get out of prison. And they can't get a job, of course, because they have a criminal record. So I was sort of the mediator between the employer and the prisoner. Because uh, usually if they get out and they can't get a job, they, they do another crime, of course. And three strikes it out, and they end up being habitual criminals and being in prison for the rest of their lives. And 80% of the people that I dealt with, they, all, they had a family member that was already in prison. And so I was sort of the mediator between that. So those are the, those are the things I've been doing. For, for me, it's like I say, you can only lead by example. That's what's, what's important. How did you feel when you made your first million? Uh, even though I was poor, I never felt poor. Uh, one day I was watching television and uh, I seen three people from the Disability Hospital in Florida they won the Florida State Lottery. They won $27 million. And the one person, she was a, a lady who was married, had two children. And she was in a serious car accident. And uh, she was injured so bad and that she lost her eyesight permanently. And they asked her what she was gonna do with her $9 million. And she said, if I could only see my husband and children, I'd give up my $9 million. And they said to the second person that was deaf and dumb, he said, if I could only speak and hear, I'd give up my $9 million. The other person was totally disabled in a wheelchair and with no bodily functions whatsoever. He said, if I could only get out of this chair one time, he said, I'd give up my $9 million. So at that time, I figured out it was worth $27 million. I could walk, I could talk, I could speak, I could hear, I could do all the things. God gave me all those gifts. And so shame on me if I didn't use them. And so that's, that's sort of the, the time, that, one of the times that changed my life. Maybe I shouldn't ask you anymore how you feel when you became a billionaire. Well, the thing is, money, money is a magnifier. Money will magnify what you already are. Mm -hmm. So the more, the more money I make, the more money I can give away. In the beginning, there was 12 apostles. Now there's millions of Christians. And so I just decided that I was going to be an apostle. I just decided I was going to go out there and touch as many people as I possibly could and lead by example. What is the best part? of now besides being rich and successful? The thing is, like you say, I, I, I only feel rich because of the fact that uh, I can help people. And, uh, and, and the, the more, you know, the, if, if you help people with their bills, you'll never have bills of your own. And so to me, life is like an echo. Whatever, whatever you put out, you always get back. So I, again, the, the money part does not mean a whole lot to me. I have. I have more, more clothing than I can wear. I have more jewelry than I can wear. I have all the things, that the materialistic things that, that one could have. And after a point, it only becomes stuff. Somebody asked me the other day, this, how much money did Howard Hughes leave when he died? I says, I know exactly how much he left. They said, how much? I said, he left it all. I've never seen a Brinks truck following a hearst, right? There's no roof rack on a hearst. When you die, you leave it all. I decided that I don't want to, to leave an inheritance, I want to leave a legacy. So it's not the tracks I make today, it's the tracks I leave behind that's important. So money, money again, is just a, a tool for me to, to, to make a difference in other people's lives. I've already been there, now it's everybody else's turn. I'm going into Guinness' Book of World Records. I've made 50 people millionaires, and uh, I'm going now to make 100 new people millionaires. And uh, um, it was a challenge. I went to uh, California. They wanted me to do a reality show. And I, I, my reality show was I was going to go into any state of the United States. Mm -hmm. I said, drop me off, give me $500, take away my credit cards, and within 90 days, I'll have a million dollar house and a new Mercedes. They found out all the things I've done in the past, and they, they canceled the, the, the show. <laughs> They said the only person that's going to benefit. They the show. Yeah, they said the only person going to benefit is me, 
it would be the shortest lived reality show in history. And uh, I'm just going to end up with another million dollar house and another new Mercedes. <laughs> and so they canceled it. And they said, uh, could you make 100 new people millionaires? So I actually went out and uh, I did all my due diligence. I spent, I, again, I talk about money as a measuring stick, but mm -hmm. I spent $292,000 of my own money going out and, and, and looking at 5,000 different companies that were in multi-level or direct marketing sales. And there's 91.2 million people in the industry worldwide. And uh, when, I, when I went out there, I found out that a lot of people that get into this business, I wanted to find out why people fail. And, and so what I found out that 82% of the people sell exactly the same products. You know, they sell weight loss products, they sell cosmetics, they sell, you know, that they sell uh, uh, health related products. And uh, I went to, I was a Canadian kickboxing champion, like I said, and we weren't allowed to drink coffee. Con coffee was considered very really? unhealthy, acidic, and uh, you needed to drink 17 glasses of water just to balance the pH in your body. So I never drank coffee in my whole life. I didn't even know what it tasted like. Wow. And uh, so uh, uh, they told me that uh, they had the world's only healthy coffee. So I thought, well, health and coffee all in the same sentence is like an oxymoron, right? <laughs> like a jumbo shrimp or something like that. How the heck could you drink coffee and be healthy at the same time? And uh, so I went to China and uh, uh, the, the company that I'm with, Organo Gold, they uh, spent $240 million processing this herb called Ganoderma. And, uh, and you know, Ganoderma is a, a 4,000 uh, year herb that is number one herb in the world. As a matter of fact, not only is it the number one herb, herb in the world, it was called the king of herbs. And uh, the reason it was called the king of herbs because it was only available to kings and royalty. They used it for anti-aging, they used it for Alzheimer's, they used it for cancer. It was so rare and so expensive that even if you got caught with it without permission from the royalty, it was the death penalty. Oh. Yeah. And so uh, uh, what they've done is they, they, they uh, Bernie Chua, a uh, Filipino person, put a half a million people on the Ganoderma product and found out the type of uh, benefits, the uh, health benefits that the people received. And he said, how do we get it out to the people of the world? And so they started looking at all the beverages. Well, they, they looked at every beverage, whether, whether it be soft drinks or alcohol or, or whatever, and they found, well, water is the number one liquid in the world. Coffee is number two in the entire world. And so they said, well, you know, you need coffee, you need water to make coffee, and we can't inject the Ganoderma in the, co in the water, water, so we put it into coffee. So they injected it into coffee, which is the number one uh, beverage in the world next to water. Then they started looking at commodities. Oil right now is $108 a barrel. Coffee is $3,600 a barrel for the same amount of liquid. And if you look on the stock market, next to oil, coffee is the number one traded uh, commodity in the world, next to oil. Wow. And tea is number two, three. Yeah. We so so we're, in the, we're in the number two and three commodity in the world. We're number two uh, in the world for, for beverages and the number one herb in the world. And we've had uh, 440 people make over a million dollars a year in the last five years. And we've got 44 people making over a million a year. And uh, so that was the, the reason I chose to, to go into Guinness's Book of World Records to make 100 new people millionaires. When you get involved with Organic Gold, was this the place that you wanted to be to make the 100 millionaires? You need to have things that are duplicatable. And uh, uh, even Warren Buffett says, if you, if you enjoy something, if you're passionate about something, you can make it your hobby. If you want to make a fortune, get involved in something that people consume consistently on a daily basis. He also said that coffee is the number one transfer of money in history. Yeah. That uh, you know more people drink coffee than any other beverage in the world next to water. And if you have a healthy coffee, which has never been un it's unheard of, now we control the market, and uh, not only do we have the number one coffee, we also patent the process, so no one can duplicate what we have. We have 40,000 new people per month joining our company. We have over a million distributors, and we are the fastest growing company in the world. What do you say to all the people who are skeptical about the organic gold business? Um, they said it's a networking strategy, it's the same as a pyramid business. What do you think is the biggest challenge well, the thing with is, organic if you're, gold? If you're selling 
uh, weight loss products or vitamins or uh, you know all these different things. Yeah, you get that type of uh, attitude towards people. Yes. But the thing is, we don't try to sell people anything. People are already buying coffee anyways. So uh, we just ask people, do, they, do you drink coffee? Yes, we drink coffee. Uh, how much are you paying for your coffee? They tell us, well, we go to Tim Hortons and we pay, you know, $2. And I say, well, our coffee is healthy. It's only 55 cents. And I ask people, does uh, Tim Horton pay you to, to drink their coffee? They say, well, of course not. And I say, well, we pay you to drink our coffee. <laughs> so if I send 20 people to Tim Hortons, will they give you a referral check? And they say, well, of course not. I say, yeah, well, no. we do that also, right? Yeah. So yeah. We, we pay people to drink coffee and we pay people to refer people to drink coffee. So I don't have that negativity of, of, of people, whether, whether if they're joining something else, it's a little different because what you have to do, people are set in their ways. People are not about to change. And I can guarantee you, anybody, I don't care, I'll, I'll give anybody a challenge. If they drink one box of our product, yeah. they'll never ever drink another product again the rest of their lives. They will notice, they will notice the difference in their health almost immediately. But how do you help somebody with no money at all? How do you help somebody to become a millionaire do from you, nothing? Do you have $49? You can start our company for $49. Okay. See, when, when Bernie Chu has decided to start the company, he says, let's, let's not leave anybody out. So that was the whole thing. He wanted to make sure that no matter where you were in your life, that you could start as low as $49. So how are you going to inspire those 100 future millionaires? In order for me to make 50 people millionaires, I had to train 3,000 people. Oh, wow. You know, so, I, I mean, it's not, it's not the point that you know, everybody is going to do it. My youngest yeah. millionaire was 19. So um, the, the, the key is, is that the speed of the leader is always the speed of the pack. If, if I mention to somebody, be at my appointment at, at 7 o'clock, if they're at 7.15, they're out of my team. But the whole thing is, is that uh, if you're 15 minutes early, you're on time. That's why we were early today. That's amazing. And uh, for me, uh, time is something we Thank don't you. have a lot of, right? Thank you. That's amazing. Time is something that we, if you don't respect someone's time, you don't respect the person. And uh, I don't believe in excuses. Uh, I don't want to hear that there's bad traffic. I don't want to hear any of those excuses, right? The bottom line is, is that uh, uh, I, I, there's 10 reasons for being successful. Number one is integrity. The other nine don't count. Uh -huh. Like, unless you have integrity, the other nine don't count. Uh, for me, uh, when I decide to do something, um, I'm, I'm all in. It's like Texas Hold'em. I'm all in, right? Texas Hold'em, yes. I'm all yes. in. Like, yeah. For me, it's like, whatever, wherever you are, be there. You know, when you, not, a lot of people make a mistake, you know, when we get into our car here tonight, when we back out of the parking lot, we're looking in the rear view mirror. And the rear view mirror is only, you're only looking in the past. If you live in the past, you'll never move forward in the future. That's why the windshield is so big. It's because we're looking in the future, we're not looking in the past. So regardless of where you came from, regardless of where someone is right now, if you've had a setback, get ready for a comeback. Oh. Hmm? How long do you think an average person with nothing, from nothing, to become successful and become a millionaire? 18 months. 18 months. Mm -hmm. 18 months if they do exactly the way I train the person to do 18 months. Is organic gold the answer? Oh, 100%. That's the only thing I know that could make that happen. I don't know of anything else. The only way you can do that is have an inheritance. <laughs> an inheritance is not duplicatable. See, the whole thing is, is I have to have, I have to do something that's duplicatable that I worked with the wounded warriors out of Virginia, men coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, and, and uh, you know, some of them are, are, are shell-shocked, some of them are injured, some of them are, uh, have some lot, a lot of difficulties in their life. One of every seven families are on food stamps. One of every five homes are under foreclosure. And, you know, those people need help. And, you know, that was, that was another reason for me to getting involved in this, because I knew that if I got involved with something that everybody could relate to, I don't have to train people to drink coffee. And it doesn't matter, you know, people, I've heard people say, well, I'm gonna cut down on, on going out to restaurants because of, you know, money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, a lesser type of car with better gas mileage. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But I've never heard anybody say, oh my God, the economy's so bad, I'm gonna quit drinking coffee. Oh. So coffee is the biggest transfer of money in history. 
amazing. Tell us about your latest book. My latest book was called The Eighth Grade Millionaire. It's called The Eighth Grade Millionaire because uh, I only went to, I never went to school. I only went to grade eight. Uh, the only thing that kept me from university was high school. <laughs> I, I, if I had the bed for that, I would have been okay, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, somebody said, how far you go to school? I said, like five miles, that's about it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I, I had... You don't like school in general? It's not that I didn't like school. I, I just didn't learn anything. Uh, <laughs> you didn't learn anything? No, no. You know, the whole thing is, is that uh, I teach now at Ryerson and McMaster, some of the universities I teach on entrepreneurship. It's really funny because I have grade educa eight education. And I'm going to some of these universities. There's guys 25, 26, 27 years old, 25 to $30,000 in student loans, and got no money and got no job, right? See, for me, for me, truthfully, a diploma is only a receipt for all the money you spent. That's, that's for me, right? You don't, you don't, if you, if you turn some of these guys around in the phone booth three times, they couldn't find their way out, right? The thing is, you you know, knowledge is your next currency. You you've got to keep your finger on the pulse. You have to have, you know, the times are changing, and they're going to change so much in the next five years. I I've, I've uh, heard you saying, "Don't be a whiner, be a winner." Mm -hmm. How do you become a winner? Well, you know, again, um, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. A lot, of, a lot of people out there, there's, there's a lot of diseases, anywhere from heart disease to cancer. Those are not the killing diseases. The, the killing diseases are called hardening of the attitudes. It's called stinking thinking, so we need to check up from the neck up. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, my, pleasure. my pleasure. Thank you so very much. Good luck to your team. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you so much. And please come back when you make your 100 million. I will. I do that, sir. Thank you. Okay. God bless, thank you. Our special thanks to Edward Mercer and the beautiful Organo Gold team. Edward's inspirational books are available on Amazon.com. Please don't drink and drive, don't text and drive, always be kind. Let's stop bullies. Bye-bye. Um,